Antarctica hides a deep, dark secret under its ice. Today, we'll discover how Earth would change if all this ice melted. As the ice melts and sea levels rise, this is what if. And here's what would happen if Antarctica's ice melted. Welcome to Antarctica. This continent surrounding the South Pole is 40% larger than Europe and covered in ice. Here you'll find seals, whales, penguins, and scientists doing research. On this continent, there is a mass of ice the size of Florida. Welcome to the 120 kilometer wide Thwaites Glacier. Its more terrifying nickname is the Doomsday Glacier. When it melts, there will be a catastrophic rise in sea levels worldwide. This Doomsday Glacier is melting incredibly fast. It's dumping 50 billion tons of ice into the ocean each year and is responsible for 4% of the 23 centimeter sea level rise so far. Some scientists predict the entire glacier could melt in decades instead of centuries. But we don't have centuries, not even decades, to wait. So I'm going to show you what would happen if it melted much sooner. In seconds, in just a few seconds, the weights has melted. Mixing into the surrounding Southern Ocean, then the Indian, Atlantic, and Pacific. Sea levels have risen 60 centimeters worldwide. San Francisco streets are flooding. Miami and New Orleans are also struggling with the water. So what's happening? Why did this glacier crack and break off from the others? Actually, something is happening beneath it. There's a massive river under Thwaites. It's flowing rapidly. It's fed by melting ice from the glacier. This happens thanks to geothermal energy from the Earth's molten interior. The melting process starts slowly, but eventually, large chunks of ice break off. This starts a chain reaction, causing more and more ice to break off and melt. And it's not just a river. A mysterious world lies beneath Antarctica's ice. But before I take you to that fascinating underworld, I want to tell you why Antarctica is so important. It's a sheet of ice covering 14 million square kilometers, with an average thickness of over two kilometers. To compare, that's about one and a half times the area of the United States. That's a massive amount of ice, 25 million cubic kilometers, 90% of all the ice in the world. And locked inside this ice, is 60% of Earth's fresh water. Now, unlike the Arctic, where ice floats on water, in Antarctica, there's land under the ice. You don't think about it since 98% of the land is covered in ice. And that's not all. 1.5 million square kilometers of the ocean is also hidden under this ice. And when all this ice melts in a few minutes, sea levels will rise by an astonishing 70 meters. We'll see what this epic melt would do to Earth in a moment. But first, I want to talk about what awaits us under all this ice, because it could be equally alarming. If all this ice melts, ancient microbes and viruses, trapped for thousands or even millions of years, could be released, potentially spreading unknown diseases to the world. Since modern immune systems have never encountered these ancient pathogens, we may have little or no natural defense against them. Without prior evolutionary exposure, infections could spread uncontrollably requiring the most advanced medical treatments for us to have just a fighting chance. Some infections might even require higher doses of antibiotics or controlled release drugs to combat prolonged illnesses. Fortunately, we are already making strides in technologies that can help us overcome these challenges. A biotech company called Geltech is revolutionizing medicine with its gel-based drug and nutrient delivery system. Their patented technology enables the higher doses and controlled release timing needed to fight these tough infections. But it's not just for extreme medical cases. It's solving a problem for about 1 billion people worldwide who have difficulty swallowing pills. Instead of swallowing a tablet, imagine taking a medication in a smooth, easy to use gel. Revolutionary, right? Well, it doesn't stop there. The Geltech system is suitable for human and animal health with applications in pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, pet care, and sports performance. Currently, Geltech is focused on the nutraceutical market with over 70 products and is progressing towards FDA approval for their drug delivery platform, which is publicly traded on NASDAQ under the ticker GELS, collaborating with brands to integrate their gel technology into new and existing products. It could be the next big leap in drug and nutrient delivery, poised to disrupt a nearly half trillion dollar market. If you want to learn more about Geltech's significant growth potential, click the link in the description. But as you'll see later in our video, it will take more than just our most advanced technologies 
to conquer what's hidden beneath the ice. Let's take a look at the bizarre creatures that await us in this frozen landscape. As you explore this uncharted territory, you'll get a glimpse of the ocean floor, and right above you, you'll see the underside of the ice. Here, you'll find a type of sea creature called an anemone. These small creatures are embedded in the underside of the ice. You'll also find other small fish and crustaceans. The anemones you find will be very different from what you'd normally find in the ocean, a new species with an unusual trait. Sea anemones usually stay rooted in one spot, like a plant. But these Antarctic anemones move around in the water. Scientists are still trying to figure out where they're trying to go. Okay, almost nothing grows in that cold darkness, right? So what do these creatures eat, and how do they survive? Probably small bits of plankton and excrement carried by ocean currents. But they also eat something super weird and a bit disgusting. It's the ocean equivalent of that rotting food at the back of your fridge. These creatures eat millions of years old decaying skeletons, bodies, and ancient bacteria that were around when Earth was much warmer. Watch out! A few more large glaciers are about to break off. As Thwaites' neighboring glaciers break off and melt, more water pours into the oceans. Worldwide sea levels rise another 2.5 meters. Cities on the east coast of the United States are flooding. Boston, New York, Miami. Millions of people are affected, even as cities are flooding. Something strange is happening on the Antarctic coast. Nearby, as all this ice melts, the sea level is actually falling, while the sea level further away is rising. Now why is this strange phenomenon happening? Remember, the Antarctic ice sheet is huge. It weighs an unfathomable 24 billion megatons. Therefore, it exerts its own gravitational pull on the surrounding waters, which raises the nearby sea level. But when the ice melts, the power of this gravity disappears. So nearby sea levels fall while they rise elsewhere. At the eastern end of Antarctica, the Denman and Scott glaciers have melted. This adds another 1.5 meters of water to our oceans. Now at a four meter rise, the United States is losing its national monuments. The Jefferson Memorial is underwater. Fenway Park is submerged. Major coastal cities worldwide are also underwater. Shanghai, Lagos, Mumbai, Jakarta, ports are flooded and destroyed. All this salt water is flowing into farmlands, destroying our crops. Worse, the underground aquifers that provide us with drinking water are now contaminated with salt water overflowing from the ocean. Even more frightening, the contamination goes deeper than just salt. Antarctic ice carries bacteria with dangerous traits for humans. Some of these bacteria cause infections and are linked to diseases like cystic fibrosis. But there's more. They have an even more deadly superpower. They are resistant to the antibiotics we use to treat diseases today. If they exchange some of their genes with our world's bacteria, drug resistance will only grow and spread to even more bacteria. At this point, we humans would be toast, no longer able to fight bacterial infections. Not good if we're drinking contaminated water. But like any Hollywood villain, these bacteria have a good side. They can help us create new and better antibiotics. They can help clean up toxic waste sites and they might even be a new biodegradable alternative to plastics. As more and more ice breaks off and melts, other ecological systems are spinning out of control. First, the melting ice is changing the way ocean currents flow. Before all this ice melted, the water in the oceans moved in a very specific way. Dense, salty water would sink to the bottom of the ocean floor, pushing less dense water towards the surface. Thanks to this movement, the water acted like a giant conveyor belt transporting heat and nutrients from one place to another. This is an important factor for the survival of marine life. Now, with the introduction of fresh water from the melting glaciers, the water at the ocean surface becomes less salty and dense, and it doesn't sink as much. It's like our ocean conveyor belt is jammed. It can no longer transport heat from one place to another. Scientists are warning that the melting of the Arctic will disrupt the warm Gulf Stream. They are still trying to understand how the melting of Antarctic ice will change our climate. In some cases, for example, if icebergs break off from Antarctica and melt further away in the Atlantic, changes in ocean circulation could bring about an ice age. But if the melting primarily causes sea levels to rise, we would likely end up with a warmer Earth. And it's not just heat patterns we have to worry about. The breakdown of the ocean conveyor belt means problems with the movement of nutrients from the ocean floor to the surface. These nutrients are important for the growth of phytoplankton, 
tiny algae at the bottom of the ocean food chain. They may seem small and insignificant, but they form the basis of life in the ocean. They provide essential nutrients to marine life. But not all phytoplankton would share the same fate. For phytoplankton around Antarctic waters, the melting ice would provide iron, giving them something rich to feast on. In fact, this event could lead to a temporary massive algal bloom as the waters become filled with nutrients previously buried in the ice. The growth of phytoplankton could be a good thing because they would at least absorb some carbon dioxide. The Earth will need it. Why? Because the melting of all this ice will make the planet much hotter, for several reasons. First, ice helps keep the Earth cooler thanks to its super-reflective surface. It's very effective at deflecting sunlight away from the Earth's surface, which helps keep everything cool. But once it's melted, it's a different story. As glaciers melt and the water warms, the activity of microscopic fungi in the water also increases, just like the decomposition of dead leaves in forests. Microscopic fungi act on dead matter in the oceans, decomposing it and releasing carbon dioxide. Warmer oceans mean more decomposition of dead matter, leading to the release of more carbon dioxide. Now, on top of that, the melting glaciers create a layer of fresh water over the salty ocean water. This causes the oceans to be less efficient at removing carbon dioxide from the air, again adding to the warming. And now the rest of Antarctica is breaking apart into huge pieces and melting rapidly. The water from the melting ice is pouring into the oceans. As the ice melts, something amazing is revealed. A natural wonder that has been hidden for millions of years. A massive canyon system, 100 kilometers longer than the Grand Canyon, stretching 3.5 kilometers below sea level and extending from the interior to the coast, it is the deepest canyon on Earth. And now you can also see the 15 million year old Lake Vostok, the sixth largest lake in the world by volume. And the good news is, you can have a picnic there when all the ice is gone, if you're still in the mood for a picnic after everything the Earth has been through. Also, you might want to stay away from the microorganisms living in the waters of Lake Vostok. They've been evolving there in isolation from the effects of our world for 15 million years. Who knows what they could do to your body, but there's no time to admire the canyon or look at Lake Vostok because sea levels are rising higher and faster than before. You're witnessing the final and most dangerous part. The last piece of ice has melted. Sea levels have risen by more than 70 meters. This rapid rise has caught people off guard. 40% of the world's population, more than 3 billion people, live near a coastline, and the vast majority of them drowned as Antarctica's ice melted in minutes. The entire Atlantic coastline, including a large part of the United States, has been submerged. People in 23-story skyscrapers have to go to the roof to survive. All major coastal cities as we know and love them, such as London, Paris, Venice, and Istanbul, are underwater. Millions of people are displaced, injured, or potentially dead from this catastrophic event. Those who were smart enough to jump in their cars and head inland when the water first began to pour onto the land may have saved their lives if they were able to reach higher ground but these are just the lucky few. With all the ice gone, there's one more thing that needs to melt, permafrost. This is soil that has been frozen for over 40,000 years in the poles. As it thaws, it releases carbon dioxide and methane trapped underneath, causing the earth to warm further and the permafrost to melt even more. When permafrost thaws, it's like someone has put a frozen meal in the microwave. Small organisms start to eat the newly thawed ancient organic matter. In doing so, they release carbon dioxide and methane gas, causing global temperatures to rise even more. Great, now we're breathing in microorganism farts and the weather is getting hotter, worst case scenario. Oh, but it can get worse. In the midst of all this, it's possible for DNA viruses in the permafrost to thaw and start a global pandemic. Creating a vaccine in the middle of this disaster would be a greater challenge than ever before. Also, it's hot. The Earth is 5, 10 degrees hotter. Heat is what caused the entire ice sheet to melt. But now these changes are making the air even hotter. When the average temperature on Earth is now almost 27 degrees, a mass migration of people begins. The most popular spots? Canada, Alaska, and the newly emerging Arctic and Antarctic regions. These are the new tropical paradises. 34 million years ago, 
Antarctica was a temperate rainforest like New Zealand. Perhaps it will be again, with palm trees on the Antarctic coast and crocodiles swimming in the warm southern ocean. Thank goodness Antarctica isn't actually melting in minutes. With coastal cities turned into watery graves, three billion people dead, our groundwater contaminated, more warming on the way, and maybe a global pandemic, I can't think of a worse situation. Unless, of course, land and water suddenly switched places.